Hi, you know the only thing better than a nice watch? And that's a nice calculator watch. Look at this classic from 1983, the Casio TC500. Trust me, it does actually say TC500 up there. Well, it did, but it's been rubbed off. Oh, look at this gorgeous classic watch. But you might think, well, Dave, where's the calculator? I only see the four functions down there. Well, let me show you. Oh, look at this Bobby Dazzler. It's on screen. This is a touchscreen calculator from 1983. This thing was the duck's guts back in 1983. Of course, it's still not a patch on the best calculator watch ever made, apart from my own micro watch, of course, um, the Casio CFX 400, because it was a scientific calculator. This one is unfortunately only a four banger, but four function calculator, call them a four banger in the uh, trade, but hey, it makes up for it with being touch screen. This is unbelievable times, blah, 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 equals, oh. Ah, uh, thing of beauty is a joy forever. Look at that. Bobby Dazzler. This uses what's called the Casio Crystal Touch Detection System, or CTDS, for those playing along at home. And it's got the electrodes actually etched into the top glass surface on here. Full function uh, watch, so it's got alarm, um, it's like calculator, it's got the alarm, it's got uh, dual time zone, it's got a timer, and a chronograph as well. Fantastic, and it's got a light. Whoa, let's check that out. Hang on. Look at that. Grain of wheat bulb on the side. Classic. None of this lead rubbish. There is one silly design oversight on this. I've got the lights off for a reason, because if you press the uh, combine cancel button, boop, it lights up the, the bulb every time. So it's taking a little gulp of current every time you do that. And that's the same thing in, like, the stopwatch, for example, when you want to do lap. It, like, come on. <laughs> like... It's hardwired to the bulb. Dope! And it really is just a beautiful slim watch as well. Look at it. I do not have a big wrist at all. And you can see it maybe in comparison to my Belova uh, Accutron 2 here. You can see the physical size of that. So yeah, it really is a nice, small, compact watch. Looks absolutely fantastic. It's got the classic uh, Casio band on it and the classic adjustable uh, clip clasp like this so it's absolutely terrific and for those who absolutely must see the back side there we go the tc500 stainless steel back water resistant of course and it's got a chrome plated uh, polymer case on here plastic bezel around the top a uh, quartz crystal glass top on it as i said with the uh, electrodes actually embedded in there for the touch sensing okay watch say this point here when i turn on the calculator you'll notice that these uh, segments nice and solid they actually overlay um, some of the other segments sometimes they don't like up here but other times they do so obviously this can't be on the same glass uh, surface so They've obviously got like multiple layers in there, but regardless of the angle that I get this at, I cannot see a difference in the layers when I actually uh, switch in there. So yeah, don't know, not sure how they're doing that, but it's very impressive. So we've got the uh, recessed adjust button so you don't accidentally hit it. Of course, mode button to go through the different modes. Buttons on this side, 12, 24 hour uh, format, but that also doubles as the back key for the uh, calculator there. And the light button, but in calculator mode, it's the clear button. As I said, unfortunately, it is only a four function or four banger calculator and it's only got the uh, eight digits. So if we actually multiply two large numbers, it'll give us an error. There we go, we've got an E up there and the C will actually clear the error like that. And then if we actually do that, the backspace will actually go back to the last number and we can erase that. That was that's pretty advanced for 1983. All the best stuff's made in Japan. For those who want to see this crispness on the LCD, oh, it's just beautiful. I don't know why they call it touch sensor cal, like it's a calendar. It's like 
they could have put the extra C on there. Touch sensor calc, thank you very much. It's a shame that on this particular model, the uh, T is rubbed off. You can just see the remnants of it up there. It really is difficult to see the embedded traces on this. But if I get the light shining on this at just the right angle, you'll start to see it. There you go. You can see the grids in there. So, and that strip going across there is probably some uh, zebra strip or something contacting that top glass surface. So you can see, you can count the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16. That makes sense. And so you can kind of see the pattern. You can see them coming off the side and going around like that. 16 lines buggering off the top there. It's hard to see the complete etched thing on here. Yep. I think you can see a pad around the keys there. See that bit of dark darkness in there? Yep. So that's how they're getting the touch on each one. So there's very little gap. Tiny little gap between each one there. Yeah, you can definitely see that. You really have to struggle to see the uh, etched sensor traces on top of that glass. Like, you just can't see it with the eye. Anyway, I think that is an absolutely gorgeous watch. And if you don't agree, there's something wrong with you. Because that is just sex on a stick. So let's open this puppy up, see what's inside. Won't see a huge amount. Very typical uh, 1980s construction, except we might get some sort of zebra strip elastomeric uh, contact uh, through to the etched glass surface, just like an LCD. So yeah, I'm not sure how anyone with uh, large digits, would have no pun intended, would have actually used this because I actually uh, miss these buttons quite often. So that's why they got the uh, back key to allow you to go back and uh, fix mistakes rather than typing in the whole thing again. But yeah, I've, I don't have big fingers at all. So I can imagine larger fingers just would not work. And in case you're wondering, um, no, you really do, like, there's nothing. My little plastic poker there, my metal poker does absolutely nothing. You really do have to have your finger on there and get the capacitive touch. And if I even extend my finger out like that, I can't do it. It really does need your finger on there. But it, it really doesn't miss a beat. And they've sort of like almost perfectly calibrated uh, the thing so that you do actually have to touch it just at the right amount, although this will vary with, you know, humidity and all sorts of stuff. And the manual actually, you know, warns you about uh, scratching the glass surface and things like that because the uh, sensor pads and, and, you know, things like that. And it will actually vary with environmental uh, circumstances and any liquid or moisture on the screen that can affect it and stuff like that. But, like, it, it just seems beautifully calibrated for a finger touch it doesn't like if i put my finger just lightly on there oh it just makes it i really do have to give it a little little tiny tap to actually get it to sense it's, it's borderline perfect so we have to get the band off before we can then get in there so we'll pop that bad boy off and ha ha we're in like flynn like I said, classic uh, Casio or any uh, watch construction of the day. And if we pop out our coin cell there, little CR1616. For you 1616 fanboys, made in Japan, genuine Max L. That almost looks like there's some flat flex construction on the back of that. And then we've got the classic plastic retainer clip like this. And... Looks like we have our, that's our waterproof, well, water resistant seal, um, cause it's not actually waterproof. And that's not an O-ring, it's just like a plastic turdy thing. Is that a really crapped out O-ring? I think it might be, God, it's almost like turned to plastic. Not sure what the deal is there. Anyway, not too impressed by that. Ugh, yeah, crusty as, wow. That's classic watch construction. Of course, there's our piezo transducer on the back. So the plastic retaining clip just uh, keeps in the rest of the mechanism. So we'll lift that out. Oh, no, we've got another ring. And the thing about the metal back in here is they actually use that to... So when you push the button, the little uh, 
contact in there pushes the metal against two uh, contacts on the edge of the PCB usually. Yeah, module's going to pop out. Oh, we've got our little trimmer down there and a little reset. And there we have it, the module comes out and ta-da! There is your zebra strip, little elastomeric connector on there which connects through to the contacts on the glass surface and the PCB, if we flip that over, we'll see, yep, down the contacts on there. So that's the only contact surface on the thing, hence why we saw all of the traces actually snaking their way down here and then right off. And there you go, you can really see the contacts now. There they are. Fantastic. I mean, you know, <laughs> like touch technology, you take it for granted now, but like, it, you know, it's embedded in microcontrollers these days, or you can get dedicated, you know, Atmel touch chips and other brand touch chips. But uh, yeah, like back in the day, this would have been like state of the art stuff, really. It's going to be a single chip solution. There you go. You can see the uh, contacts on the side there, which uh, then connect between the top metal uh, plate up there and the side when you push in the button. So that's how the buttons work. Very typical. And you can see how the contacts work right here. When you push in the side like this, it contacts the gold uh, castellated edge, the gold plated edge on the PCB down in there. And that's what, so the metal backing of course is like ground or whatnot, and that makes it, and that makes contact with the gold-plated edge of the PCB and that's um, the very typical in watch construction and you can see the contacts down in there for the zebra strip and maybe you can see the contacts on the zebra strip down in there perhaps should be able to they're tiny there's lots of them there's more than what's actually um, on the uh, the contacts that are on the PCB and the glass uh, surface that's how they Make, um, you know, you have multiple connections through, so you don't just have the one. And check this out. At great risk to management, I have taken apart the uh, plastic back holder. There's nothing terribly interesting on there, but there you go. Look at this. This is like, this is black magic from 1983. <laughs> little little uh, SOT 23 down there on the board. That'd be like an 06, no, that's an 0805, actually. Um, and there's our watch crystal up there. Our little uh, compensator trimmer cap, another cap. There'd be a black blob under there, of course. And there's our contacts over there. And we've got these larger things here, which I think are probably embedded resistors, are they? That'd be my guess. Looks like, uh, looks like they've got some carbon resistors on the f embedded on the flat flex. And of course that makes sense for a touch sensor based system so that they can, of course they do it um, in capacitive touch based on uh, timing. So to have the uh, series resistor in there, they can, uh, you know, count pulses and do whatever, do their timing stuff. But, you know, like to get this sort of stuff working at 32 kilohertz back in 1983 is absolutely remarkable. And the engineering that's gone into this is phenomenal. And I believe the retail price for this puppy back in 1983 was $29.99. So, <laughs> you know, fantastic. And this wasn't the only Casio uh, model to actually have the touch. They had other, like, you know, database and other uh, type watches in there, but oh, wow. Isn't that sex on a stick? Oh. So it's interesting to look at the uh, design decision here because they went, well, we need a series resistor to get the RC time constant for the uh, capacitive because it's just a resistor and the capacitor, which is your finger, then go into ground, which is the watch uh, case ground, which is why the instructions actually tell you if you're operating on a table, you have to actually touch the watch band, which is then go going through to uh, circuit ground. So basically, you've got a series resistor then going through... Uh, uh, your finger can capacitively 
to ground forming that capacitor there. There's already a capacitance there, but your finger just amplifies the capacitance, just uh, causes a greater amount of capacitance. So it's just an RC time constant thing. And they went, well, we need, uh, we've got 16 buttons. We need 16 series resistors. And that's going to be a bugger to fit those on the PCB. I mean, you know, we don't want to go to a, like a, a four layer PCB or any of that rubbish. Jeez, you know, don't want to spare no expense on this thing. This is a cheap ass consumer watch. So let's just put it on a flat flex as a resistive uh, substrate. And I've done a video on carbon printed resistors on PCBs, but it's exactly the same thing on uh, flex. So I'll link that at the end because it's uh, fascinating how they do that. But obviously they designed uh, these onto the flex. It meant that they could bring it from one side of the PCB to the other, as you can see. And then, so not only is it a routing issue, surface component issue, all that sort of stuff, bring it out to the uh, zebra strip and go up to the top contacts. Brilliant. So to design all of that you know, all the metal work and the custom plastics and everything. Like, you take for granted all your 3D uh, design for manufacturing integration and stuff. These days, you know, you can um, model all this in, um, you know, Altium if you wanted to, for example. Model your PCB and import all your uh, step models for all your... Um, stuff done in SolidWorks or whatever uh, CAD package you use and then you can fit it all together and make sure it all works and or use your favorite CAD package or whatnot but to design that in 1983 design and manufacture that in 1983 that's just yeah hats off to Casio they're just brilliant but of course this wasn't you know exclusive to Casio all pioneering watch manufacturers back in the day um just you know remarkable what they were able to do with their uh limited uh design tools back then i mean you know it would be hard enough these days to actually uh you know design and manufacture this let alone back in 1983 early 80s unbelievable and i'll tell you what it's not easy getting these things back in the tolerances are ridiculously tight on these so fingers crossed it works that doesn't look promising, does it? <laughs> I'll try the uh, all clear button again. And a little pro tip, because that uh, AC pad is um, recessed all the way down in there and you have to short it out to the uh, case ground here, you steal the spring from the piezo buzzer. There it is, just steal it from there, whack it in there, but be careful it doesn't spring anywhere and then you can short it out with a pair of tweezers or just bend it over. That's how you get it going again because these things usually need, they don't have a power on reset. Ta-da, we're back. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha, winner winner, chicken dinner. Absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, like I bought one. And I've always wondered about, you know, old classic designs like this, even if Casio still had the design files for this, would they be able to remake it today? Would those design files be useful at all? It'd be absolutely fascinating to know. I'd love to hear from one of the old timers at uh, Casio who actually designed or were involved in, uh, you know, projects like this, because this was like really breakthrough technology back in 1983, but why didn't it last? Well, you know, I guess maybe the novelty wore off for these sort of like little touchscreen calculator watches. It was a very early 1980s thing and it pretty much died out by the probably the late 80s. Um, I, don't even, I don't think it survived into the 90s, that's for sure. But yeah, it's one of those icons of the 1980s, the calculator watch. And this one, you know, it, it's not as iconic and well known because it doesn't look like a calculator. It just looks like a normal watch. But it, it was absolutely remarkable. I'd still rather have the CFX 400, of course, because it's a full scientific uh, calculator with, you know, uh, binary hex decimal conversion as well, for, which was absolutely remarkable. But this watch, this is absolutely fantastic. I just love the technology involved in this 1980s state-of-the-art technology, which, you know, still holds up today. Just the design and manufacturing that goes into something like that. I, I'm just like always in awe of products like this. And you just take it for granted. These little consumer things that almost throw away prices. There's a lot of engineering that goes into them. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below. Catch you next time.